What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be going over some of my favorite option strategies that I use to make money in my options account and we're going to be going over them in detail. So if you enjoy this video, please go down and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts if you have any other option trading strategies that you want me to go over. Make sure you watch the entirety of this video because a lot of these steps are very important in order to make sure that you're trading these correctly. Now, before we get into these exact strategies, let's just go over some basics on what options are. So a call option, when you are buying a call, you are buying the right to buy the stock at a certain price on a specified date. So if a stock is trading at $100 and you buy the next week 105 strike, you are technically buying the right to buy the stock at $105 at the end of next week. Now, in order to break even on this type of contract, the stock would have to go up to the $105 mark and it would have to go up to the price you paid. So if you spent $1 and each option contract controls 100 shares of stock, you paid $100 for the contract, so the stock would have to go up to 106 for you to break even. Now, the same thing with the puts, they're a little bit different. So if you buy a put option, you are buying the right to sell shares of a stock at a certain price on a specified date. So if you buy puts, you're technically buying the right to sell 100 shares of stock at a certain price. So it's basically they're used for kind of setting a floor on what your stocks would go to. A lot of people just trade these and that's what I do. So that's also a good strategy. So if we take a look at implied volatility, this is basically what it means. If the price of an underlying asset, meaning a stock, so a stock price, if it is expected to move, a large amount in either direction during the time until expiration, the implied volatility IV, that's what I'm going to call it in this video, will be higher. And when the expected move of the underlying is lower in the time until expiration, then the implied volatility will be lower. This will be very important when we talk about IV crush. IV crush is something that happens after a company announces its earnings. So the implied volatility kind of runs up in, in the amount up until the company's earnings date. But once the company announces their statements, there is not really a large expected move anymore. So the implied volatility will decrease along with the price of the options contracts. Now, theta decay, theta is basically time decay. It's just the rate that an option contract will lose its value in the time until expiration. And delta is going to be the rate of change in the value of an options contract when the underlying asset moves $1. So if you guys have any questions about these basic option terms, please put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them as soon as you put them out. Now, let's get into the first strategy that we're going to discuss. This one I like to call the run-up. So this right here says three to four weeks before, two weeks after. So basically what you are going to do is buy 20 to 30 percent out of the money contracts because these are usually cheap and you're going to look to buy these three to four weeks before the earnings announcement and then you're going to pick an expiration date that is two weeks after so why do you do this so you want to get into these contracts early because usually when a stock has its earnings announcement coming up in the near future, there is a lot of price speculation on where the stock will go after the announcement, the earnings announcement. So there is going to be a run up in implied volatility and the options prices will increase as well. So if you get in early enough, you're going to see a bump in the premium because there is a higher expected move in the underlying stock. We're going to get a little bit into more the expected move of the stock in the next strategy. So if you want to learn how to actually calculate this expected move, make sure you stick until we go over that. So holding through earnings is extremely risky. You don't really want to hold through earnings, especially if you have a lot of money in the contracts. If you're holding through earnings, it is gambling. You do not want to gamble with these contracts because they will expire worthless if the stock does not move in your favor when the earnings uh, date is announced and the company puts out all of their numbers. And that is due to the implied volatility crush that I mentioned earlier. Now, this strategy sometimes requires a little bit more money than strategy two, 
which is why, in my opinion, this makes it slightly res more risky. The trade itself is safer, but in terms of how much money you have to put up, it requires a higher risk tolerance because the amount of of the amount of percentage gain or loss is going to swing more than it would in strategy two. Now let's take a look at an example of this in real time. So Apple has earnings on January 26th. So this is about three weeks before Apple has their earnings announcement. And if we look at the February 19th expiration date, we're gonna that's basically two to three weeks after the earnings announcement. Right now, these $160 calls are priced at around a dollar. So that would cost you $100 per contract to get into this trade. Now, if we take a look at the contracts closer to the money, we can see that they are $560 and $790 respectively. So that essentially means that if Apple goes up to $160 before earnings, these contracts will go up between five and 700% in value. Now, remember what I said before about implied volatility. Right now, the implied volatility on the Apple options chain is relatively low. Now, these numbers are going to go up most likely to about 70 to 100% the week of earnings. They won't go up as high as the weekly expiration date when Apple has its earnings, but they will still go up. So this is exactly what I do when I evaluate an options chain. I look at the closer to the money uh, contracts and see what they're priced at, and I see what the contracts that I would be looking at are priced at right now. Anything from 155 to 165, I would say is a decent contract to get into on this option chain. Now, nothing I say is a recommendation. This is just for educational purposes only. And I'm just showing you how you can use this strategy in order to trade options for earnings. So the 155 and 160 contracts are about 20% out of the money at the current time. So these are going to be a very good uh, contract to get into. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if uh, these app at the stock price of Apple does not get to 155 or 160 by my expiration date. Now it would then expire worthless, but it is highly probable that Apple will have a run up into their earnings event and these contracts will go up in value. It does not matter if they don't go in the money before expiration, they can still have profit and you can still make money. Now, if you sell before the earnings announcement, you're probably going to make a decent amount of money if Apple runs up to the $145 mark, maybe even $150 if you have the $160 strike with an expiration date this far out. So that's the first strategy that we're going to go over. This strategy was working so well throughout the summer and some with some some stocks at the end of August and early September, but this next strategy that I'm going to uh, show you guys and go over is a little bit more complicated. It requires some basic math, but it has a you can be wrong more times than you are right and still make a substantial amount of money. And this strategy has been working more recently with the volatility of everybody's earnings announcements. So let's go over and take a look at the second strategy. So this second strategy, I like to call the market maker is wrong. So what you need to do is you need to calculate what the market or the market makers are pricing in for the earnings announcement. If you trade on TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim, it does this for you. It has a little tab on the top. I've seen it. I, I don't trade on Thinkorswim, but I know it says like, market maker and it says a certain percent and that's going to be the percent that they're pricing in for earnings but i'm going to show you how to do this once you calculate what the market is pricing in i'm going to show you guys how to do this with an actual example after we go over each step but once you calculate what the market is pricing in you need to ask yourself a very simple question do i agree or do i disagree i usually only get to this point if i see that the market makers are pricing in between a four and six percent move in the underlying for the earnings date so here's here's why so this strategy involves buying both an out of the money put and an out of the money call at 1.5 to two times outside of what the market makers have priced it in. So if the stock, if the market makers are predicting a 5% move in the underlying, we're going to be buying a put and a call at 10 at around 10% out of the money 
on each side. If it's anywhere above 6%, the underlying stock would have to move about 14% or more for you to have a chance at making a pretty significant profit. Now, if it was pricing in 6%, you might be asking yourself the question, why can't I just buy the 10% out of the money anyway? And the reason for that is because those contracts are going to be more expensive and you have a lower chance of the contract shooting up in value after the earnings announcement. So if we come down here, you should also buy contracts that are very similar in price. So if one of them is about 9% out of the money and one of them's 10, but they're very similar in price, I, I usually go after those because in order to break even on this trade, one side, the call or the put needs to go up 100% in value. And then any profit after any amount that the contract goes up after that is profit. So if we go down here, the reason why I think that this strategy is less risky is that when these types of plays hit, they hit big. So it's usually at least a 1000% gain. I've seen some of these go up 5000%. The last time that Apple had earnings, I played one of these strategies and I had I think it was the $112 call and I also had like a 185 put. By the end of the day, Apple was trading at $130 and these contracts were worth almost 10,000% more than what I bought them. So if you meet if you were to trade 10 of these strategies on earnings and you were saying, "Okay, well, I think they're going to be a thousand percent gain every once in a while you need one out of every 10 trades to hit and go a thousand percent in order for you to break even on all of your trades if it's two thousand percent you need one out of every 20 so you're kind of putting the odds in your favor you don't have to be right every time and since the pro uh, potential profit percentages are so high, you can trade with a lot less money than in strategy one and still make a very significant profit. So with this strategy, I usually try to buy about 100 to $150 worth of contracts on each side, because if I'm wrong, I don't really want to lose 300, uh, 200 to $300 on a trade. So there are a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this strategy. So you kind of want to... So if you trade companies with a high share price and very little time to expiration, a lot of times I, I buy these contracts that on Thursday and the earnings announcement is Thursday after the bell and I buy contracts that expire that Friday. So the yield, the potential profit on these contracts is a lot higher because there's barely any time. And if they shoot in the money, the contracts really sp uh, spike in value. But this is also very risky. If the contracts do not go in the money by expiration, you will lose. So if you want a less risky options trade, but you want to use this strategy, you can use the same strategy, but you can buy contracts with more time. So usually I almost always buy this type of trade with either one day to expiration all the way up to one week. So let's go back over and take a look at an actual ex example of how I would trade this strategy. Now we're going to use Apple again, but Apple does not have earnings this week. We're just going to learn how to price in what the market makers are expecting for the expected move throughout the week. So if we go back to Apple, we I have the January 15th expiration date, which is going to expire next Friday. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the at the money call with the at the money put. So if we pull up our calculator, we can see that if we add the 2.36, 2.36 plus the last price of the at the money put, 2.27, we get this number right here. So 4.63 is the amount of move in either direction that the market is pricing in for Apple this week. So if we divide this by the share price, so 132.05, we're gonna get this number right here. So it's three and a half percent. If I saw this number, three and a half percent, on a, on a week where Apple had earnings, I would 100% play this. So if we go back, we can take a look at what contracts I would actually be buying. So right now, Apple is pricing in 4.63. So let's multiply this by two. So we're going to look at two times what the market is expecting. So times two, 9.26. So about $9 out of the money. So it's about trading at 132, so we're gonna do 133, four, 
we're going to go all the way out to about the 141 mark. So right here, these contracts are trading for very cheap. So these are between 26 and th or between 27 and $34 a contract. So you could buy, if you were going to put $100 each way, you could buy about three of these. And if you go back to the puts, we can go and see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About these contracts right here are very similarly priced. So if you were to see that Apple was only pricing in nine dollars about for their earnings, these would be the contracts that I would go for, and I would buy about three of each. So I'm spending one hundred dollars each way. So for example, if this is Saturday, which it is today, and Apple had their earnings on the Thursday of that week, I would keep calculating what the market makers are pricing in throughout the week, and I would keep an eye on what the what the change in th in this number right here is, this $9.26. It probably will go up throughout the week, but the time I'm going to buy these contracts is going to be so close to expiration that the premium on the option chain will have decayed so much that we can snag some cheap contracts. So if Apple had earnings Thursday after the bell, I would wait until about 3.50 p.m. Eastern time and I would buy these contracts then. The reason for this is that if I buy them any earlier, the strangle, that's what this option strategy is basically called, the strangle would kind of get out of whack. And one contract would go up in value or the other contract would decay in value. And it could go so much that the stock moves so much on earnings that your whole trading strategy kind of gets screwed up because it, it before earnings, it went so far to one end and then on earnings, it shoots back up to the other end, but not enough. That's why I like to wait until almost the last possible minute to put these kind of barriers on the end of the options so if you guys enjoyed this video and all of the information that i had for you in this one please go down and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts what other option trading strategies that you want me to go over in the future